Hello folks, this is going to be my review of an Uzon KG UV6X transceiver handheld radio. Now first things first, I'm not an expert. I know very very little about handheld radios and shortwave radios in general. I was basically looking for a small handheld radio that I could use to get started that I could have while I was pursuing my ham radio technician's license because it is an area that I want to learn more about. So this is one that I found on the internet. Keep in mind that my impressions are coming from somebody who knows nothing. So I may have some unrealistic expectations and hopefully it will solicit some comments from, from folks who are more knowledgeable than I am who can help steer me in the right direction. So. First off, what you see on the table is what comes with the radio when you purchase it. You receive a manual, a belt clip to stick on the back of the radio, a power brick for the wall that again goes to a base unit for charging the radio. It will charge the radio and then an extra battery. You however only get one battery uh, when you purchase the radio. I do like the radio and that it is very small and slim. Uh, it is very light. Uh, the battery pack is a 7.4 volt Lion battery, more on that is later. There are three buttons on this side, uh, top is push to talk, the other two are programmable ones that you can use. Bottom row and right now I've set to, oops, got to turn it on, on the top is the on off, uh, channel select here. This side has your headset and microphone jacks, that's typical of a lot of handheld radios. Uh, bottom button, I currently have programmed to charge a flashlight that's on the top or a little LED light, so that's kind of cool. Um, it is a dual band radio, meaning it will monitor two channels at once. You can program up to 200 channels for it to keep track of. It comes locked when you first purchase it. You can't use the keypad to program it. You also have to purchase a programming cable and download a free application that you run on your PC in order to program the radio. I do like that application though, by the way. Uh, it makes it very easy to program the keys on the sides, uh, the display, all the other different features. I tend not to use the keypad to program it. You can, and the manual goes through all the different ways to do it, but for me being a, a newbie, that's kind of confusing. Using the software application where it's simply point and click makes it much easier for me. Uh, here's what the cable looks like. In addition to purchasing the cable, there are some other upgrades and some other additional items that I have for the radio that I plan on using with the radio. I haven't necessarily tested everything out, but these are things that, that I'm looking at, at pursuing. One of the first things I did was I got a, a different antenna, replaced that small antenna with a larger high gain antenna. That just screws into the top. Now I'm lucky there's a whole bunch of repeater stations around where I live, so uh, I haven't really had a, an issue with being able to listen to people. Again, I still don't have my technician's license, so I'm basically listening, trying to learn. The other thing I wanted was I wanted to be able to keep it charged while it was in my car if I was driving. I do tend to be do a lot of driving for work, so sometimes it's fun to listen to the CB bands as you're going along especially if the weather is bad. I also like the fact that it does the NOAA weather bands. If I forgot to mention it, this thing basically covers all the different radio spectrums, at least that I knew of. There's probably more out there. People will look at me and laugh. But it, it covered your basic walkie-talkie, it covered your basic CB, it covered the marine bands, it covered the NOAA uh, weather radio bands. It even has a digital FM radio. So again, I wanted to be able to use it in my car. So I purchased what I thought was the car adapter. Um, but being a neophyte, did not realize that this little end has nowhere to plug into the radio. You've got to plug it into this base unit and then plug this into your car. Um, this, you know, not too safe in the car sliding around on the dash or in the console, didn't really like that. So that for me is a bit of a, huh, kind of moment. Um, so what they offer instead is another car adapter that actually replaces the battery on the back. So you take the battery off, put this on it, and then you plug this into the car lighter. Uh, now what's interesting about this is 
the wire comes out the bottom of the pack. So when you have it on the radio, let me turn off that little light. Your radio can't stand up because that wire is coming out the bottom. Now that's not a big deal if you've got a clamp that grabs the radio from the side, which I do have, but my cell phone is usually riding in it. So I would have to take my cell phone out of that. I would have liked to have seen this come out of the radio in a bit of a different manner so that I could kind of drop it into a cup holder. Um, you know, but I can understand what they're saying. Hey, they want it kind of mounted and, and looking at you, not picking it up out of your out of your cup holder. So they may be thinking that's a distraction, a safety issue when you're driving. But again, that kind of annoyed me uh, from that perspective. The other thing I was looking at, because I was thinking of using this camping and hiking and, and like I said, for a bug out bag or a get home bag, they do make a case that you can put AA batteries in and put it on the back. And I thought, well, that's really cool because I have a Goal Zero Guide 10 Plus, which some of you have seen from my other videos. And I have the Goal Zero solar panel, the, the seven watt panel that folds up. And I thought, well, that'll be cool. You know, I'll be able to use my rechargeable batteries in it. Well, here comes one of the things where I just don't know enough. Apparently, the rechargeable batteries are only 1.3 volts. A regular alkaline battery is 1.5 volts. So, what you have is a 7.4 volt radio. If you tried to use rechargeables at 1.3, that would only get you to 6.5 volts. I have seen on the web where people say you can use the radio in low power mode with rechargeables, but not necessarily with high power mode. So that would affect how far you could transmit and receive a radio signal. Otherwise, you're stuck dragging additional alkaline batteries along with you. So that was kind of a little bit of a, of a disappointment. I was looking for something where I could use this battery holder or battery pack unit and my rechargeables if I was going to be out camping for a week then I could use this and I could be recharging my batteries with the solar panel. I, I really wish they would have added a sixth battery to this even if it had made the case a little bit longer coming out the bottom of the radio just so I would have been able to use rechargeables in there. The Goal Zero um, panel does have a lighter attachment, uh, but and, and it is a 12 volt, but I'm a little bit concerned it's a seven watt panel, can it really put out the juice? I do have an alternative to that. Unfortunately, they no longer make these. This is a Tekion battery pack unit. This actually can provide up to 19 volts. It's the 3700 series. Uh, it has an auto ranging power supply in it. So it recognizes how much voltage and amps your device needs and then it automatically provides that up to the 19 volts. So this, however, is heavier um, and the solar panel that I use to charge it is actually much bigger than my Goal Zero. It's actually a Brunton uh, 14 watt solar panel, but it unrolls to be about three feet in length. So I take this when I'm on a boat or car camping or something like that. Uh, this unit here can actually charge a laptop for about two hours. It will charge my cell phone for about a week. It can charge my iPad and my iPod multiple, multiple times. So cool tool there. Plan on using it some with this radio when I go camping. However, it's more weight than I was planning on carrying. It's, you can see it's three, three and a half times bigger than the Goal Zero. So there is a weight penalty for taking it with me. So I have another little toy for this radio. Uh, this is my little EMP box. Some of you saw this. I made this kind of as a uh, challenge to see whether I could make one. Uh, so I tend to keep the radio inside of here. It's kind of, it fits nice. This also fits my iPhone. Generally, I was using this when I was camping or boating, sticking the, the phone in it, uh, but now I can also use it for the radio. So that was another reason for that small form factor was looking at the size of the radio, making sure it would already fit in my waterproof case so I didn't have to go out and buy another one. So overall impressions, I tend to like the small form factor. I like the flexibility in the radio channels. 
I don't like some of the issues that it has in terms of keeping the radio powered for an extended period of time, whether I'm in a vehicle or whether I'm out camping. Again, I really wish the battery pack unit had allowed you to use rechargeable batteries. I'll have to work out some creative power alternatives, but I'm curious in people's comments, their suggestions, you know, are there other radios out there that would compare better? Are there other power options that I should be looking at? Uh, just really looking for information, but also trying to post some of my own impressions for folks. So as always, hopefully this video made you think. Hopefully you'll subscribe and please submit suggestions and comments. Thank you.